All right, so let's make a formal introduction for our listeners. Good afternoon, Christian. My name is Claudio, and I'm calling you from Washington, D.C. Uh, from the students in Fairfax City, we're very humble and grateful that Christian Sassini accepted our invitation to our show. Uh, Christian, welcome to the show, man. Thank you. Thank you, Claudio. Nice to meet no, you. No, no problem. This has been a very weird period for everybody in the last two years with the COVID and musicians, a film composer yourself cannot tour that much, cannot go out that much, venues are closed. It's has been crazy. How how the, the COVID has affected your, your life, your creativity? How are you holding up then? Your sanity? I, I think uh, for uh, most of uh, film composers, you, you, you will talk. Uh, most of us will uh, will tell you the same thing. In uh, in some way, nothing changed because uh, uh, film composer are used to be buried in their studios and uh, writing music and be be lonely and uh, be by themselves. So this uh, doesn't change so much. From the point of view of uh, tranquility, serenity, anxiety. Uh, this affected uh, everybody uh, because we are uh, living uh, in, a, in a crazy world. We are officially in the, in the third year now of the of the pandemic. Uh, in, in a month, we'll uh, we'll end the second year of pandemic. So I think everybody is uh, uh, personally in in their personal life really stressed now. Uh, from the point of view of uh, of the the work of our work, we are privileged because uh, uh, film composer had the luck of uh, working uh, a lot. Uh, we don't have uh, a lot of project uh, a project shut down, uh, and uh, we have uh, experienced an increase of uh, need of music for uh, home entertainment, uh, for movie, for streaming, uh, and, and so on. So the streaming service uh, helped uh, a lot to put a lot of people on work on, uh, on, these, uh, on these days. Think of uh, uh, Amazon or Netflix uh, uh, project and so on. Uh, in my particular case, I'm, uh, I just finished the work uh, on uh, a animation movie that started in the uh, 2016 so is uh, uh, now for uh, five years in uh, in the making so i was busy with uh, a project that started long before the the covid emergency started so uh, we have been really lucky uh, to work in music and to work in uh, in studios the real problem was for a uh, musician that uh, live uh, of uh, live per performances. So, so the, the venue are closed or uh, the audience uh, capacity is limited. So it's a struggle for the people that live uh, on, uh, on, on live music. The other problem was uh, still is uh, the recording of a uh, musician. A lot of orchestra shut down, a uh, lot of uh, recording studio I, I had to have different uh, way to organize their work. A uh, lot of soundtrack, uh, soundtracks have, has been recorded from remote. So if you need uh, 12 uh, violins, uh, you can put 12 people in a uh, recording studios, but, but you have to record uh, each uh, violin from their bedroom or their uh, small uh, studio and, and so on. I think that uh, uh, hopefully when uh, everything uh, is passed, uh, from, uh, we will talk in future uh, from uh, about these years and uh, we will uh, listen how the those recordings were being made and uh, we could listen to uh, the, the covid era music uh, as a more uh, um, br breathless uh, uh, sound if you think about it everything is recorded now it's recorded in uh, in home studios uh, even uh, billy eilish uh, the, the, the one uh, the, the, the grammys for in the, the last two years uh, 
has recorded uh, their work in uh, in a smaller room uh, at home. So I think the the sound itself of music, not 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 just for uh, uh, soundtrack, but the sound itself of music is, is more uh, claustrophobic in uh, in those days. And uh, I, I think uh, in, in the future years uh, we will uh, study how the, the today records are, are being made. I got you, got you. Very good explanation. Yeah, for some people have been bad. For me, it has been in a way great because I was working from home and I was buying a lot of CDs, vinyl. I was going very busy in my life. And now, I two years ago, I needed to stop my life because I was going a thousand miles an hour and see what is was important and begin listening to the music. I was buying more than I was consuming, right? So, and uh, I needed to see what was important in my life, happy to be alive, and then listen to all my music I was buying. I was listening, so that was great in many ways. So, very, very happy to be alive here. Uh, where are you born? Let's go to the beginning. Were you born like in a, a sort of musical family? How old were you when you began perhaps taking piano lesson or guitar lesson and your parents see you and say, man, this, this kid likes music and he's always listening and stuff, playing with the radio. How, how was the, the beginning for you? When um, I, I, My parents uh, are not musicians, but my uh, grandfather was. He was a, a physharmonica player and an accordion player. I still have yeah. uh, his uh, acc accordion. Uh, but I never met him. Uh, he died before I was uh, I was born. Uh, but my father is uh, always been a music lover, so he educated me to listen to uh, good music. Uh, I literally grew up in immersed in music from the radio and from uh, from uh, the vinyl that uh, my father had. And I, I, I still have my collection of uh, uh, music from, uh, it, it was uh, from uh, cartoons uh, from the late 70s, uh, early 80s. Uh, and my father keep uh, buying me those uh, small records uh, of uh, cartoon music. It was, uh, Mostly in mm -hmm. Italy at the time, uh, uh, anime and Japan, uh, Japan animation. Uh, as soon as was, uh, I think uh, six year old, six year olds, uh, mm -hmm. my father, that was uh, really passionate but never studied music, uh, told me you must learn an instrument. You, I, I didn't have a choice. You must, you have to learn an instrument. So uh, he, he, he tried to find a good teacher. Uh, the, the nearest one was a, a pianist. So I uh, started to study piano. Uh, my father uh, was an, an enthusiast. So the first thing uh, he did, he, he buy me a, a baby grand piano just because I started to study piano. I still have this amazing baby grand piano, yeah. uh, but I stopped to study music after a month or so, uh, because I, I was uh, really annoyed by uh, the, the, the theory and uh, the, the, the teacher was a, a, a classical musician I wasn't interested in uh, uh, reading music uh, and so on. So uh, after uh, just a month, uh, I, I want to stop a lesson. And uh, my father said, that's OK, no, no problem. But having this piano at home, uh, ask to any pianist, when you have a piano at home, the uh, room when you have uh, the piano is the piano room, because the piano is a really big instrument. Sure. So uh, every day, uh, even uh, without uh, doing, uh, without studying uh, music, I put my hand on the on the piano, and sort I started to uh, 
learn uh, by myself uh, how figure out how the piano works and then when i grow up i started to take a lesson in a more seriously uh, manner and uh, started to study piano uh, but uh, i always um, uh, also today i uh, had uh, an interest to learn by in, uh, myself uh, things uh, with uh, even uh, new new instruments because i find uh, uh, an interesting challenge and uh, uh, when you don't have a, a, um, a classical education you find a way to play the instrument in a different way and uh, you try to uh, to find your way to the to the instrument itself when i grew up uh, when i was uh, 18 i started to play flute and uh, I started, started to play also by myself. Then in a second moment, uh, I started to, to study in a conservatory. So I studied uh, jazz uh, and then I had a, a jazz degree. But uh, I, every, uh, every time I started to, to play a new instrument, the first approach is, was to find uh, my way through the instrument. To, so uh, having a, a total, uh, uh, wrong uh, uh, approach maybe but it was my personal one and this uh, affected my way uh, to compose to not in a very classical uh, common way and, and this uh, helped me to find my my inner musical voice good for you man good for you and then after conservatory i was looking into your biography man you have been very lucky to study with ennio Marconi. Uh, Danny Elfman, Hans Zimmer, Howard Shore, and and so on and so forth. Man, how in the you you have you ever thought when you were 18 years old, looking back in your career now, say, man, you have worked with the best of the best of the best. Yeah, I, I've been uh, very lucky, and especially for uh, Maestro Morricone. Mm. Uh, I meet him uh, two time. Uh, one, uh, the first time I meet him. Uh, was an uh, an award ceremony when uh, he received a, a, an award in a, a city uh, nearby and uh, i had a friend who, who knew him and i asked him can you uh, pr present me the the, the, the maestro i just want to just want to shake uh, his hand and uh, in, in this first meeting, uh, I had him to uh, autograph my vinyl record of uh, the Secret of Sahara. It, it was a TV series, uh, really popular when I was uh, uh, when I was uh, just just a kid. I was, uh, I think, 10, 10 year old so, or so. And this was uh, the first vinyl uh, vinyl disc I bought. Uh, my father brought me to a record shop and uh, told me buy what you want uh, i buy two record uh, vinyl uh, one was uh, best of rock and roll uh, so it was uh, a compilation of uh, the best rock and roll from the 50s and the second record i bought uh, was uh, the secret of sara by Ennio morricone i i didn't know at the, the time who this uh, morricone was but uh, this melody uh, was uh, always uh, on TV and uh, haunted me for for years. So I went to buy this record. And the first uh, thing uh, that uh, I said when uh, I meet him, uh, Maestro, this is the first record uh, I bought in, in my life. I want you to sign it for me. And uh, I have uh, I have it right here. I hope you can, uh, you oh, there, can yeah, see the back. it yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on the back. And uh, the second time I met him, it was at National School of uh, Cinema in Rome. There is a, the, the, the Centro Sperimentale of Cinematografia. It's near, it's in front of Cinecittà, uh, the studio where Fellini uh, uh, shot uh, his uh, most famous uh, movies. In front of Cinecittà, there is uh, this uh, National School uh, of Cinema that is the second uh, uh, most ancient uh, school of cinema in the world. The, the first one, uh, I think, is uh, Russian, 
The second one is, uh, is Italian. And uh, I meet him uh, at the uh, Film Music Laboratory. Uh, in, it was in uh, 2014. And uh, I had a chance to, to study with him and uh, to talk with him. And, uh, and he said me uh, a, a really interesting thing. The, the first thing uh, Morricone asked to a young composer is, uh, uh, have you studied uh, classical uh, composition? Uh, uh, you had uh, your degree in, uh, in composition. And uh, I said, uh, no, maestro, I, I, I have a degree in, uh, in jazz music. And uh, I'm not a classical composer. Uh, and he smiled at me and I said, uh, so you will, uh, you will keep uh, writing music like a, a jazz musician. And uh, uh, this could be uh, interpreted by, um, as a, um, a, a bad thing. Uh, you are not a classical musician, you can, you can write music. But uh, uh, he said it with a, a, a wink and, uh, and a smile. And uh, it was meaning uh, it's good for you to find a different way to, to write music, but keep on studying classical music, keep on listening to uh, Bach, keep on listening to Beethoven and, and the great classical musician. Because uh, let me rem remind you that uh, Morricone was a really serious classical musician, but uh, he, he had um, uh, more than great uh, uh, and best musical taste. He, he knew about jazz, he knew about uh, pop music, he knew about uh, every kind of uh, uh, music era in uh, history of music. So this was my, my meeting, uh, my greatest uh, uh, achievement in uh, studying with Morricone. For you, man. And then not only that, but you were one of the, the founders of the uh, ACA, ACMF, the Italian Association of the Film Music Composer, right? And uh, where I think yeah. Ennio Morricone was the president. That's, yes, a, that's Ennio, a big deal, you know, that's a very yeah, big deal. Yeah, uh, Ennio Morricone was uh, our honorary president. It was uh, one of the promoters of the association. I, I can say that the association uh, was born uh, because of uh, the, 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 the battle uh, Ennio Morricone fought uh, uh, to, uh, to give uh, to the composer the dignity uh, to th that our role uh, deserves. Uh, in uh, the, the last, uh, I think, uh, uh, seven or, or ten, uh, ten years of uh, her life, uh, Ennio Morricone keep uh, doing uh, master classes uh, and uh, interview and uh, public uh, meeting uh, wh where he, he wants really to talk to people uh, and to explain his, uh, his work, uh, to explain what a composer does, what a composer uh, can do for uh, for a movie, uh, can do for the the, the, the story of uh, film music, and that this was uh, a personal battle because, uh, uh, especially in Europe, uh, the um, the figure of film composer is uh, sort of neglected from for um, for the critics uh, for the classical musician. Uh, 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 for the, the overall audience. Uh, it's like a uh, uh, um, film composer is less uh, uh, important, important. Than, than a normal composer. And this was a cause, uh, a cause of uh, suffering for him. Uh, he had a, an amazing career, uh, both as a, a classic composer and both as a, a film composer. And uh, uh, it was uh, really uh, worried about uh, about this for his career and for uh, the, the careers of uh, every single uh, young composer. So the last ten years of the life of uh, uh, of his life is dedicated to, of course, write music, but also to give uh, uh, 
uh, master classes and uh, to give public uh, speeches. So you can find a, a lot of the speeches in, in Italian uh, on on YouTube. Uh, and they are really, really great speeches because he really wanted to uh, fight the, this uh, this idea that, that a film composer is not good as a classical composer. Uh, so this uh, was the, 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 the first uh, um, the first stimulus for us to uh, to, to bring on uh, this association. And this association fight for the rights of the composer or to have uh, a specific role in uh, role in uh, music. For example, uh, in Europe, this this doesn't happen a lot in the uh, United States, but in Europe, uh, the author of a movie, the authors are, are four. There is uh, the director, there is uh, the screenwriter. The, there is the one who writes the subject, and there is the composer. So the author of the movie is uh, uh, That's four. Is, uh, divided in four parts, and one part, one of four, is uh, is uh, the composer. This is, is a, a longer tradition, and we try to keep uh, this tradition because the the composer uh, is so important for uh, for a movie. It, it's arrived at the end of the editing of the movie at the end, very end of the post-production, but it can change, totally change uh, the uh, significance of a movie and, and its meaning by putting a, a certain type of music or a, a different one. So it's definitely one of the author of, of the movie. And the Morricone knows it uh, and wants to defend this, uh, this role and we, work to defend it uh, also in this way. Uh, no, absolutely, absolutely. Most of the time, as, as you know, right, the, 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 the director and the person who wrote the script, right, based on a book or based on, out of his idea, will get 90% of the, of the credit, right? And the, the film composers, being yourself, being John Williams, being Ina Mariconi, and so on and so forth, Hans Zimmer, they take only a, a one percent credit, which is is very unfair, you know. At uh, uh, in many cases, as you know, can be a great a great movie, but if it wasn't for great music, right, it wouldn't be as great. Or vice versa. Sometimes you will see a, a very not a, not a great movie, poorly directed, but with very good film score, and then that will help. But uh, yeah. The movie out in sales, so it's very unfair, you know. I, I never experienced the uh, the contrary. I never experienced a, a good movie with a bad soundtrack, uh, but I experienced the bad movie with a good soundtrack that helped a lot to, to the, the movie in right. itself. Absolutely, absolutely, no, yeah. What in, in terms of composing, right? So let, let's go into your career. You know, who inspired you and which score do you love? Because you have done thriller, you have done horror, you have done drama, fantasy. Is any particular area that you drawn or or is irrelevant for you to a director to hire you to do a thriller versus a fantasy or drama? Is any what how do you how in your mind how how you can yeah. divide okay this will work for this and not for that? I think that uh, the, 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 the answer is uh, I give you now is different than the one uh, I'd give you 10 years ago, because uh, you, you can uh, read a lot of credits of horror uh, or thriller movie in uh, for the young composers, because uh, from a certain point of view, it's uh, easiest to uh, work on uh, horror movies uh, because uh, th 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 there are so many. So, lo lot of them are uh, really low budget, uh, maybe good, but lo low budget projects. So uh, low budget projects are more uh, used to um, contact, uh, to have a young composer, uh, a, debut, uh, a debuting composer. So it's easy at the, the in the early years for each single compu composer to work on horror or thriller uh, movie. 
uh, I, would, uh, I haven't said this, this uh, I like to score uh, horror movie because uh, when I was young, I was uh, really passionate about this uh, kind of genre, I, like uh, every every single teenager on the, on the earth, I think. Uh, nowadays, I, I'm more passionate about uh, uh, good stories. So no matter what uh, the music, the film genre, uh, if the story is good, if the idea, ideas are, are good, if there is a good story to tell, uh, I'm absolutely in. Uh, but if, uh, if I had to choose uh, some uh, direction, uh, I would say I, I'm uh, really interested in uh, animation uh, movie. Uh, I'm really interested in documentary because they are uh, uh, usually documentary, a really important message uh, uh, to tell, uh, to share uh, and, uh, with uh, with the audience, uh, with the uh, with the future, uh, with the story, and uh, I'm, I'm also interested in uh, in drama, in drama movie, because uh, you you have you have to add uh, a really great story to tell, to shot a documentary or, or an animation movie or a, a drama. Yeah, and so that's I, always. I'm the... not I, I'm not interested. In, uh, for example, in a blockbuster uh, yeah. movie, I, I'm not interested in uh, in money uh, because it's most important to to share messages than uh, to share money. And so, yeah. I have I, I have interviewed other musicians. They 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 tell me that the primary goal is make money. Whoever pays the best. In your case, you look at the other way around. If, yeah. if somebody if somebody pay you more than the rest. And the, the story is terrible, and you're not going to like the director or whatever. You may say, "No, I'm not interested," because I, 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 some year ago, an uh, an important music critic uh, here in Italy uh, did uh, an interview with me, and uh, I, I gave I gave him the, the, the same answer I'm giving you, and uh, he said, "I don't believe you." Uh, because I said uh, I'm not interested to to score a Transformer uh, 16, uh, <laughs> for example. Uh, because and this journalist said uh, the money are important. Yes, I said of course they're important. But uh, uh, if I have uh, a kid, and at the time I didn't have a kid, and now I have a four year a year old uh, son. Uh, what uh, I, I I can uh, share with him when he when he when he, when he's grow grow up, uh, I prefer to share with him a good movie I did than uh, share with him some money. Uh, maybe when he's grow up, he will prefer to have money for his father. Then, uh, but I, I, for me, it's really important. Uh, do you know the story about uh, Peter Pan and uh, Hook? Uh, uh, the story, Hook, uh, the, 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 the captain of the pirates, uh, yeah. every time he was out to uh, chase Peter Pan, uh, every time he did uh, a speech to his uh, crew of pirates, uh, because every time he, he, he was going on a mission, uh, maybe this is my last mission, maybe I could die, and I will give uh, uh, a last speech to my pirates. So Hook, uh, every time it was Captain Hook was giving uh, the last speech, uh, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow. For uh, uh, for him, every day was his last speech. Um, I, I'm telling this because uh, uh, I feel uh, for me is is this: if uh, I am going to die tomorrow, uh, what is my last project? It was a good one. It was a good uh, movie with a, a good message, uh, with a story to tell, or was it just a, a blockbuster that give me money. W what you do with with money when you're you're dead? Uh, but uh, when you die uh, and you had uh, shared with the world, uh, with humanity, some good project. This is uh, the real goal to to live in future and to live uh, for uh, hours. This, yeah, absolutely. This my, my idea. I, co I completely agree with you. I completely agree with you. People should do, be doing 
what you believe on, right? The story that you like, the, the director that you like, and, uh, and the man is secondary. If you're good at what you do, right? Plus, you need to believe in yourself and have, be happy at the end of the day, you know? Not say, man, I should be working with you because I need to pay the bills or I need to buy a new car or whatever. Do it because you like what you do, you believe in the story, you believe in the director. The money, the money would come if you're good at what you do. So it's, it, I completely agree. Looking back at your at your career, you have done a lot of stuff, and you still you're very young. Is any particular piece of music that you you are uh, most proud of? If you if you look back in your your young career, you have uh, thirty years in front of you, and so you have a lot of. <laughs> I, I I can tell you uh, two things I'm really proud of. Uh, that, that one is a reacted movie I had this summer. Uh, it it means uh, for your listeners that uh, a reacted score is when you score a project, uh, when you finish the, 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 the movie, but uh, uh, in the very end, the producer or the director said, uh, no, I don't want this music anymore. We are going to call another another composer and this uh, uh yes this uh, happened a lot the I, I suggest to your listener the, the reading of a big book there's a lot of pages uh, is it's called uh, you can find it on amazon it's, it's called the uh, turn turn music turn yeah. music yeah. Uh, wow. and, the, and there's uh, a list uh, an infinite list of every single composer who had uh, at least one score reacted and you can find uh, name uh, of uh, everything, Ennio Morricone, uh, Hans Zimmer, uh, John Powell, and Bernard Herrmann. Bernard Herrmann was rejected in the, uh, in the torn uh, curtain by Hitchcock. Uh, it was uh, uh, the reason for uh, of her fight. And every single composer, there is a said in Hollywood uh, that said that uh, you are not a real composer if you are, uh, if you haven't uh, been reacted been at least uh, one time, and uh, <laughs> last summer I have, uh, I had a uh, full score reacted, and I think is one of my best work, and uh, still uh, today I'm still working on it because I will publish uh, as a solo album, uh, I think uh, uh, over the year, and I think uh, is uh, one of my best projects. I'm really proud. Uh, of it uh, and uh, think about it, uh, it was a reacted score. And, and the then one, you, and you, you, but you got paid, right? You got paid. Yeah, yes. Uh, usually you get paid. Uh, I had paid uh, half uh, the, 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 the contract we, uh, we, did, we agreed uh, at the, the moment, but I, I got paid. In the uh, in, uh, USA, they are more uh, um, stricter in, uh, in the contract. So if you had a reacted score, you have paid in, uh, in full. But this was a really uh, small uh, independent uh, uh, project. So we, uh, we found uh, an agreement uh, good for, for both. But I, I kept the rights of the music. This means I can uh, share it and I can uh, publish it. I can uh, use the, those music in uh, future uh, projects and, and so on. But, uh, why is that, but why something like that, Christian, happen? I mean, uh, you, it, let's say I'm the director, right? I'm going to hire you yeah. a film composer to write the music for a movie called X, whatever that means. So uh, we, you write the music at the end. I mean, I'm the director. I don't know what you're writing at the end. I don't like it. Or we can communicate toward the end when I'm finishing my movie and I say to you, Christian, I'm going to need your, your score in a couple of weeks. Let's get together. Yeah. And then. Uh, how, how, uh, 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 how a director cannot like what you do if you communicate along the way that you like? Every, every single story is, uh, is, is different. Yeah. Uh, and and I really suggest you to, to read this book because it's really yeah. informative uh, about it. It's, it's really uh, also funny as interesting. But uh, the, the story in this case was uh, that uh, the director uh, was uh, agreed with every single cue. The director loved every single cue. I started yeah. to write the music uh, from the script itself. 
uh, when uh, the, the, the music was, uh, when the movie wasn't uh, even shot. Uh, so the, the, the producer, the director uh, listened to the music. I composed uh, initially from the script and uh, they shot uh, the, the movie with the, the, those music in mind and the editor cut the music, the, um, cut the, the movie using my, my music as temporary music. And then in the end, the producer, the producers uh, found that the movie uh, they were shooting uh, was not what they had in mind. So in some cases, what you have in the end is not what you uh, think it was the, the product. And uh, what, what can you do in the end? You can reshot the movie. You can uh, uh, reshot yeah. the performance of the actor. But you, in the end, you can change at least. Uh, you can change the the music. It's the the, the music in a movie is the, the very last thing that uh, uh, that come uh, in 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 the game. So what uh, can you do when the mu the movie doesn't work? You can change the music, and this happen uh, a lot. A lot when you see a, a, an article on Variety or uh, on, uh, on on the news. Uh, uh, the, the, computer, the, the composer for the, this movie has changed because there was a, a schedule, uh, a schedule uh, uh, difference. It's not true. Uh, usually, the producer uh, they decided to change uh, uh, their mind uh, to change the music because it's the very last thing they can change. So uh, it's a, the, 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 my director uh, was loving the music from uh, start to finish, he agreed uh, about every single cue, every single sync, everything, but the producer uh, didn't agree with him, so he decided to change the music. This happened. But did they need to go, they need the producer need to find another person, hire the person, yeah. show in the, the film, yeah. the person need to, the film company need to, you know, film. Created and, the, and, uh, it, and it they take had, a lo longer to release a movie, right? Uh, not because uh, uh, what happened when when you have a rewrite of a score, you usually have uh, a two week, three week, because you you had uh, to respect the deadline and uh, the releases and uh, and the campaign for a festival and so on. So the, the, the problem with the rescoring of a movie is, is, is this one. No, uh, any second uh, try that take two weeks can be, can't be absolutely be better than uh, anything that has been composed for months. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I was uh, in, in the movie uh, even before it was shot. I, I read the script I, and uh, I, I watched the, the, mu the movie uh, so many times. I, I, I think I watched uh, the movie more than the director and the, the uh, producers and the editor itself. Uh, so I'm, I think I'm the person who know more uh, that movie at, at that point. And anyone uh, can start uh, fresh and uh, do a, a better job in uh, just a week. Uh, so it's, it's just uh, uh, a matter of uh, a test. Uh, opinion, uh, like I think Col Coltrane or Alvin Johnson was uh, said, uh, opinion uh, are just uh, as old, everyone had one. Uh, That's right. <laughs> so uh, it's just a, a matter of test. Yeah, got you, got you. Well, that's a very good explanation. In terms of, is our particular genres are more difficult to work with you? Let's say you have three directors, one, two, and three, and uh, the, 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 the first director is about a thriller, the, the second one is uh, games, the, the third one is uh, drama. It's for you, right? From your point of view, it's one genre, and assuming that you like the script, that you like the director, yeah. you, you you have three choices, you know, and and then you you have you have three choices on your table, and you can pick only one. It and it and and they pay the same, you know, take the money out of it. Is any particular genre 
generate harder for you to work with or how you how you decide when if you have two projects right when to take this one first and the other one in a couple of months and, and so on so forth what uh, I think the, the most difficult uh, genre is uh, uh, is comedy because it's uh, it's easiest to make a, a people cry than a, than a people smile to make a, a people smile to have a good musical sense of humor is really it really difficult uh, but I I like uh, to be challenged so. Uh, I usually try the most difficult uh, one uh, because uh, when uh, when you're good to do drama movies and you keep uh, doing drama movie, you you remain the same. Uh, you don't uh, you, you don't go a a, a step uh, beyond. Uh, so I. The easiest thing is to do, uh, I think, drama or horror because uh, uh, drama is uh, and horror are uh, really primal uh, emotive experiences. So are the same for everyone. Uh, scary music is scary for every single person. Uh, make smile uh, uh, it's really different uh, or or, uh, or movies that talk uh, about love we are every single person have a, a different idea of uh, love uh, and uh, of, of smile and uh, while uh, uh, sadness and uh, terror are the same for every single uh, human being and uh, uh, if you think about about uh, one of the greatest uh, uh, director and an actor in the story of movie, uh, Charlie Chaplin, uh, it, it was uh, so successful because uh, he found a way to uh, talk about love, uh, talk about smile in a really um, worldwide way. He was famous. Uh, in, an, in the entire world, it, it, it is uh, uh, nowadays because uh, he found a way to talk about love and, and to make people smile that was uh, and that still is uh, uh, today universal. So I think a, a, great, a great artist is uh, the one uh, not that, that, that can uh, make you cry, but that can make you smile. So I think the most difficult and most interesting I think is this one. Got you. That's very good. When working with a, a filmmaker for the first time, let's say you know I'm, I'm new in, in Italy or in Europe, and uh, and I you I I'm, I'm at the beginning where right? I have not done so many movies, and I hear about you and I like your music. Do you do you typically prefer to see like a like a rough cut of the movie because the mu the music will go toward the end, like three quarters of the project done, right? Okay, now we need to start bringing cues from different movies so we can align the, the sequence of uh, uh, scenes in the movie. Do you, you prefer to see like a rough cut before signing into a particular project or is it good enough for you to see the script before the movie had been shot and they have an idea, oh, I think, uh, I could apply this type of music, adaptive type of music, because I like the script at all. What, what do you prefer? Or you you go three quarters of the movie done, get rough. If, uh, if I know the, the director, it's, uh, it's good. Uh, the script is good enough because uh, I know the, 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 the director taste. Uh, I know his vision from uh, previous uh, movies uh, and so on. Uh, if not, uh, I think I, I really need to see something because uh, the, the script could be really good, but the acting could be really cheap. And uh, I, I can help myself. I, I can't work on, uh, on a project with uh, cheap uh, uh, dialogues or, or, or actors or a bad photography. 
uh, and so on, because the, the ending result will be uh, just ridicule. And uh, it will be a, a, a bad uh, step for uh, also for my career, uh, because uh, a bad movie is, uh, is bad, a bad acting. You, you can you, you, you can help uh, a bad actor to, to shine uh, with the music if uh, it's not good to express uh, emotion uh, or, or, or to tell a story. So uh, if I know the, the director is absolutely not a problem, I can uh, uh, can work from the script. Uh, if not, it's better to to see something to uh, and uh, in some cases I had to uh, step away from a project that had uh, bad uh, bad acting and and if is a uh, another movie, uh, it's usually not a problem because. Uh, Acting in our movies, uh, uh, in some cases are cheap, in some cases are also even funny. But it's something you can pardon to, uh, to an horror or an independent movie. But if it's a drama, and uh, you you watch watching this drama, you 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 start to smile and you start to distract from the story because you are distracted from the the bad uh, acting or or the bad lights or how it's shot uh, i can tell myself i had to step away from the from the project and in the past is uh, it happened uh, i think a couple of times I, I said, uh, uh, of course, uh, I didn't say that to the director, you, 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 the acting uh, is cheap uh, or your project is not good. <clears throat> it's not my project. Uh, I, I, I can tell with my music, this project, uh, it's better to find another, a better composer. I, I usually say this one. I got you. Do you usually work with, uh, with two, three projects at the same time, or you need to wait until one is done before you engage in the next one and and then how long does it take to do like a, on, on average right a, a compose music for a film uh, it depends uh, first of all it, it happened to to work on uh, uh, different projects at the same time it's happened it's really stressing uh, it's better if the, the projects are different for example this uh, just last summer i worked in the uh, the project I was talking about that was reacted, it was a, a, a thriller. And in the same time, I was, work, uh, I was working to an animation movie. So they was uh, really different, uh, a thriller for an animation movie. So uh, when I work uh, uh, at the thriller was a way to rest my mind from the animation. And when I was working in animation, it was my time to rest my mind from the Taylor one. It was, uh, uh, it could be uh, difficult if you are had to work at the same time to two thriller movie or in the same time to two drama movie and uh, so on. This could be difficult. In the past, I had, uh, I worked, uh, in seven, but this is the composer life. Uh, as a composer, you are always for all your career uh, a freelancer. So uh, for a year, uh, you can, uh, you, you don't have, uh, uh, if not uh, small work. Uh, and uh, in some year in the same month, uh, you have to, to move to the leader. And uh, as a freelancer, you never say no to, to a good project. Uh, of course, it's, if one project is uh, not good at all, uh, you can, uh, you can step away and, uh, and go with a more interesting one. About the time, uh, it, it depends. Uh, if you had to, if you have all the time of your life uh, to, to work uh, on a composer, on, on a project, you, you can uh, do anything good. Uh, because uh, composers are never, 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 never happy about their work. They keep on changing, they keep on changing. Uh, I need to change this note, uh, I need to change this passage, I need to change these chords, uh, I need to, uh, to, to put a pause uh, there, I need to change this instrument, I prefer. Uh, so uh, if you don't have a, a precise deadline, uh, 
it's a real a great problem because uh, composers are never uh, happy about their work. If you think that uh, Endel wrote more than 100 uh, symphonies, uh, Mozart just 40, uh, 40 symphonies, and uh, Beethoven just nine, uh, it means that the, the composer in the, in the time started to uh, think more about the music and to, uh, and to be more perfectionist. So the, 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 the time is infinite. But uh, lucky, when you work to uh, score a soundtrack, a movie project, you have a really tight, really precise de deadline. So in some cases, uh, one month, uh, three months. In some cases, uh, you have two weeks. Uh, it depends from, uh, from the project. Uh, I think uh, the, the, the more tight is the deadline, more uh, uh, creative you are, because uh, you need to respect, absolutely respect the deadline. If not, you are fired. Uh, if not, uh, uh, producer, director will not call you in the future uh, anymore. And uh, you need to find uh, uh, interesting solution to, to deliver the work as soon as possible. And then that, as soon as possible, that they give you like a month or two weeks. What what's the time range before? It, it depends from project to project. As I said, the last one I worked started in 2016, so it was five years in uh, in the working because it was an animation movie. And for yeah, sure. this animation movie that's called My Love Affair with Marriage, that it will be out later this year. Uh, I started in 2017, uh, 16, uh, sorry, uh, to write the, the song because there is a, is a sort of musical, there are a lot of songs. And I ended uh, a couple of months ago uh, to, to write the score. So in this case, uh, we really had all the time to work uh, because animation is a, a, a work of art and uh, every single uh, frame has to be uh, drawn uh, by by end. So you have a lot of time when you work uh, in animation. When you work to a thriller or to a drama movie, uh, usually you have uh, a month uh, or so to write the, the score. But it depends uh, from the kind of score they need. It's really different to, to, to write uh, a score for string quartet or, or, or for just piano or, for, or, or electronica for a full orchestra. When you have to write music uh, for full orchestra, you have a lot of uh, things involved as uh, uh, writing down the parts for a single musician, uh, hire the, the musician, uh, go in the studio and, and so on. When you have to write with uh, just electronic music, you can do everything by yourself in your small uh, studio uh, and uh, just a computer. If you have the opportunity to work with two people, I will mention, I will mention, uh, I will give you a couple of alternatives. One, a director that, that would have hired you, that you wish you have worked alive, and then a person who died. Any, any, any Italian, American, German is uh, two people, that two directors that, that you admire, that you wish, man, I wish I had the opportunity to do a movie from uh, this director alive and then another one that is not alive because I like his movies and, and so on so forth. If you have, if God give you the power to, <laughs> to do that, what would you like to do? The living one uh, absolutely was uh, Woody Allen. Woody Allen. Uh, one of my favorite uh, director. Even if I know uh, that they usually don't hire uh, composer because uh, he use uh, pre-existent music for every uh, every single uh, uh, of his film. So uh, no composer uh, have uh, worked with Woody Allen. So it's uh, being an impossible dream. I, I can uh, uh, ask something impossible. So. Uh, what, my favorite composer is Woody Allen. Uh, I have a, a background in jazz music. Uh, I know he's a great jazz musician he himself. He's a, a great clarinet player. I, I also uh, attended a, a concert in Italy a lot of years ago when he was playing uh, 
uh, clarinet with uh, his band. So the living one is absolutely Woody Allen. That one, uh, I think uh, Kubrick. Uh, it was a really, a, a really interesting uh, uh, composer. Uh, Clockwork Orange is one of my favorites. Uh, movie and one of my favorite soundtrack a great uh, uh, electronic uh, score uh, amazing work so Kubrick and Woody Allen yeah yo those are those are big names man and those are yeah yeah very very if, if I yeah with the sir you 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 need to to have a, a big uh, <laughs> a big shot yeah of course for me my top three bands of all time right been rock, rock and roll, films, uh, Genesis, uh, Led Zeppelin, and Pink Floyd. And so I will, of course, I don't compose music, but I would love one day uh, have the opportunity uh, to interview them. Of course, they are not together anymore, right? So Peter Gabriel left Genesis, and I have seen Genesis, I have seen individual members like Royal Water many times, and uh, and people from Led Zeppelin many times, but I, of course, I never had the opportunity to interview. So that will be my dream. Hopefully, one day I will be talking to like you with Roy Warner or somebody. Uh, uh, you name one, uh, three of my favorite uh, band. Of course, uh, as I said, I, I have a background uh, ultra rock music and uh, Genesis, Led Zeppelin, uh, and Pink Floyd. Of course, really. Uh, uh, did the story of music. Uh, uh, for example, if I had uh, an album uh, to choose from the story, not story of rock, uh, I mean the story of music, uh, it was uh, uh, Norm Morricone or Norm Mozart, uh, but it, it is The Wall. The Wall is my uh, favorite recording of uh, all the story of uh, music. For personal reason, of course, but uh, also for the greatness of uh, uh, the power of the message, the power of the, uh, of the music, uh, the, 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 the greatness of composition, uh, uh, and uh, and the performance uh, and, uh, and the lyrics and uh, everything. So uh, you name one of uh, my favorite band. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I could Let, let's let's. I want to bring your attention to the following. Uh, three tracks and I was uh, going to YouTube and then going to uh, Spotify and listen to uh, one of the top um, the where you had more hits uh, Spotify and feel free to elaborate. Can, what can you tell me about Anna, Anna Yelena 3? How did uh, the composition uh, uh, come together from the album? I think it's called La Surpresa, I think. If I'm yes, the surprise is... It, it is from a, um, a drama movie, yeah. uh, a small drama movie, Italian, but, but really, really good. It was, it was uh, one of the, the projects uh, I was talking uh, about, uh, something I'm really proud uh, of. Uh, and uh, a score that worked really well because uh, the director, uh, and this happened really, uh, it's really rare when a director say, say uh, I like your music, write anything you want. You are totally free to write everything you want. And my best project uh, were when the director uh, said these magic words. And uh, I had the freedom to write music in the way, in any way I wanted. And uh, the director and the producer, I, everyone loved uh, the music. And Yelena is uh, a song, is, uh, is, uh, the auntie vocal of uh, a singer, a friend is called uh, Laura Bruno, the, the, the singer in, uh, in that song. Then you can listen on Spotify. And uh, uh, the, the, the melody uh, came to me when I was uh, in, in the shower. It's uh, wow. really incredible. <laughs> uh, I, I had uh, this uh, script. Uh, the, the director told me about the story. And when I was talking about the story, I uh, started humming. And uh, it's uh, like this start to finish. When I go out of the shower, I take my phone. I record it uh, really uh, quickly uh, the, the the melody and, and the words too. 
and the words uh, are uh, uh, it's a grammelo as the French uh, said it, it doesn't mean nothing it's just a sound they are not uh, Italian words so they are not French but they sound uh, a little bit uh, uh, East European uh, or uh, Spanish uh, they have some uh, specific sound uh, uh, they sound like a language but they are not uh, that doesn't mean nothing it's just uh, it's just a sound uh, Anna Yelena could be a name of a person uh, but but it's not uh, so the, the the words are just uh, uh, sound the voice is used uh, just like an instrument and uh, the, the the harmony is really really uh, easy uh, but the melody is uh, haunted me for, uh, for a lot of time because it, it stuck on my mind uh, so so quickly uh, and uh, still now I'm uh, really happy about it because uh, it has a sort of uh, ancient uh, uh, sound it could be something that, that, that came from uh, uh, from the past from the renaissance uh, uh, from the Middle Age, uh, uh, but uh, also it's modern and uh, and uh, and timeless. Uh, and the voice uh, had this power to make it uh, uh, timeless. Wow, man, that's that's I can't believe your your process to write in the you know in the shower. And then that's that's a beautiful piece. I have listened to the album. I don't have it, but as I said before, I will be buying several of your albums and send this in the for you to sign. But um, that's the first one I, I listened from you, and oh, it's unbelievable. It's, I mean, some, some like anything else, right? Some movie bring emotion to me. Some stuff, some books do not, right? It's a people, people pay a hundred million dollars for a Picasso. For me, it doesn't mean anything. It could be ten dollars, you know, but. But that particular music, it, it triggers emotion in me. It's, 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 uh, it's very, very, very well done. Man. So, thank you. So, and, and so. it, I, sincerely, it happens uh, a lot. Uh, melodies come, uh, come to me. But Mozart said uh, once, uh, everything is composed. Uh, the, the composer uh, has just the job to transcribe what they listen in the universe. So we are uh, just uh, uh, transcribing what, what the melodies that are in the in the air. I like to to think that it is uh, this is the way to to compose. Okay, absolutely. And uh, what about a memory? I uh, think from the album, I think uh, frames per second. I believe is. Yes. Yeah. Uh, That's a beautiful piece too. Is an, an album of um, uh, a compilation of uh, small music that I, uh, I composed for a small project, as uh, short uh, uh, short movies. And this was a, a short movie by a, a French director. Uh, where uh, you see in, in the movie the memory the, the, that this person had about. Uh, uh, a girl. So you, uh, in this short movie, watching in slow motion uh, all the memory uh, of the face uh, of this girl, uh, the beautiful girl, uh, uh, all the memories this person uh, uh, had of uh, in, in his life. And so the, this uh, this piano music try to uh, mimic the um, the step, the memory have uh, about a loved person. So it's, it's really intimate, uh, uh, it's a, a bit melancholic, uh, but uh, it's uh, also keep going on, like, like uh, uh, our memories of a dear uh, a loved person, a loved one. I got you, Rich. The other one that I really like, I think, uh, Serial Killer Hair. Uh, from the yeah. album Hide Secret Nightmare, it's more yeah. electronic stuff I like as well. So different from the other yeah. two. Yeah, it, it's really different. This uh, was uh, one of my first uh, horror movies uh, by Domiziano Cristoforo. It's a good uh, experiment, really experimental uh, 
director is uh, uh, compared a lot of time uh, here in Italy to uh, Dario Argento or uh, Lucio Fulci, some great uh, uh, director of, uh, of, of the past. And uh, this was my homage uh, to uh, the, the, the film music composer of uh, thriller and horror movies from the uh, late uh, uh, 70s, uh, uh, early 80s. Uh, so there is uh, a mix uh, uh, between, uh, let's say, the, the, the Goblin or Fabio Frizzi, uh, meet, uh, in some case, Bernard Herrmann. So it was my uh, way to think, uh, what if Bernard Herrmann was born in the early 80s uh, and was uh, using uh, uh, the orchestra as it, it was uh, using, plus uh, uh, electronics uh, scenes from uh, early 80s, uh, so uh, vintage uh, scenes and uh, uh, vintage uh, reverbs and effects. So it, it was a, a funny uh, way to experiment with uh, orchestra plus uh, electronic uh, music. And uh, I had good memory about this, uh, this project. Yeah, uh, yeah, you mentioned Goblin. Yeah, I recently I interviewed Claudio Simonetti as well, and he's a very nice person. So it's uh... amazing. We, we, we have collaborated, uh, thanks to Lisa, uh, the, yeah. our publicist, in, uh, I, uh, in October. We did a, a record together, and it's called uh, uh, Halloween Came First. Uh, and it's a song uh, uh, on, uh, you can find on Spotify. Uh, by the main, uh, the name Wood Moon. Uh, it's a it's a rock band, and we worked to this uh, song, a funny song about uh, Halloween, Halloween tradition, uh, and uh, and so on. And uh, Claudio gifted uh, with amazing Moog and vocoder uh, solo. Uh, give it a listen. Uh, you can find it uh, on uh, on Spotify. Yeah, it's a I, really I amazing. Listen, guy. Yeah. Plus, he's a very, yeah, very good person, man. It's, uh, uh, you can, uh, can you elaborate on the number of releases you have done? Is everything available in CD, vinyl, or digital format? It's, uh... Uh, nowadays, uh, publishers are a little bit shy to publish uh, CDs or, or uh, vinyl because uh, is. Uh, uh, I'm frank, it's a suicidal uh, decision to publish uh, uh, a vinyl or a CD. Uh, but I'm so uh, suicidal that I published uh, a couple of years ago a vinyl of uh, not uh, film music, but a string quartet uh, I wrote. So the, the, the most suicidal, suicidal decision and, uh, yeah. and expensive. And, uh, but as, as I said, I really don't care about it. Uh, the, the, the important thing is to have uh, the music uh, uh, out there. So m most of the things are on Spotify, but I, I still believe I'm still a collector of uh, vinyl and uh, of CD. So I still believe in, uh, in publishing the things in, uh, in physical form. So if it's uh, up to me, uh, everything I publish by, by myself, because in some cases I prefer to publish uh, uh, things uh, by myself as an independent uh, musician, it's uh, on uh, CD and also on uh, Spotify and on, and on digital records. But uh, when uh, I rely to uh, other publisher and uh, uh, record companies, uh, it, it's up to them. They decide uh, if uh, they want to, to publish uh, uh, vinyl uh, or uh, a CD. Nowadays, uh, the published vinyl is uh, even uh, more difficult because uh, uh, the, the, the COVID crisis, uh, the lot of uh, vinyl pro producers, uh, producers and uh, farm are uh, all shut down or they have a lot of uh, pre-orders. So, so if you decide now to publish a vinyl, you, you, you must wait uh, about uh, a year or so. And it's, this is not just for the, 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 the small name, uh, even for the big one. Uh, I was talking with uh, a record shop owner in, uh, during Christmas, and he said, I, I was uh, going to order 
four, al four copies of uh, uh, Back in Black of ACDC, and uh, the Italian uh, distributor say said, uh, no, I can send you just two of them because uh, I have order. We are talking of Back in Black. Uh, it's uh, an old recording, Wars. but the, the reprints are uh, taking a long time. Uh, and they tend to privilege a, a really big name. So if you, you want to publish a record uh, in vinyl now, you, you just must wait. While uh, uh, Spotify yeah. is uh, something that uh, is uh, uh, more, of course, more quick. If I send today the, the, the file to Spotify tomorrow, uh, everyone can listen to them. Yeah, if you can now get a hold, I, I can send you a copy. I have like okay. a, yeah, I, I, ACC, of course. I have a, be, a big music collection. I mean, my CDs, I have about, I don't know, 5,000, vinyl about 2,000, Blu ray about 1,000. So it's a big, big piece. Different floors. I mean, you can see here. In, in yes, the I, I can see. I, 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 I have four floors full of. Closets, furniture, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to here in this room, the basement, I want to, uh, I want to hire somebody to build some um, shelves and stuff like that to put yeah. everything to be more organized. But uh, so if you can not get it, I, I, I will send you a, a, a copy of them. No. Uh, but, but Don't worry. As I said, I said before, uh, I, I still believe in the vinyl and CDs because uh, it's something that I can uh, <clears throat> share in future with uh, my kids uh, and yeah, uh, of course. With people. Uh, because something that is now on Spotify uh, or uh, on the Apple Store or on uh, as an MP3 on, on, on a phone or on, a, or on our disc, we, uh, we can guarantee that this will uh, remain in the next 10 years. I mean, we can play music uh, uh, from back because it write it down uh, on uh, pencil and paper, and now we can uh, play them, and, and now we can enjoy this music. Uh, but uh, of the modern music, what will uh, remain? If you publish something just on Spotify uh, or on digital source, uh, in the few, or, or if you listen music on, on YouTube. Uh, no. In two years or in ten years, uh, where uh, will uh, the mu this music will go? Uh, um, something will be preserved. Uh, the majority of them, uh, of course, it, uh, it will uh, just vanish. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a big, like a big music collection as well? Or? Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, uh, especially of uh, vinyl. I'm a, a vinyl addict, uh, and uh, yeah. I still uh, buy vinyl and. Uh, and, uh, and CDs uh, on a monthly basis. So uh, I think it's something uh, really important. I, I mean, I, I also listen to, to music on Spotify because I, I think it's really practical uh, to have uh, every single music uh, publish, published in the world uh, attend. If I am running uh, on the beach uh, I, and uh, in this moment, I won't listen to this uh, rare, uh, uh, album of Morricone from the 70s. Uh, I can just press play and uh, listen to study and uh, have it, uh, it at the end. But if I really like uh, this record and uh, if I want to keep track of this one, uh, then I go home uh, and uh, I contact a record uh, uh, shop and uh, I said, send me this uh, record, please. I want it in my collection. Yeah, got you. Do you um, where where do you live, Christian? You live in Rome now? No, I, I live uh, far from Rome. It's about a three hour of train uh, from Rome. It's uh, on the other coast, uh, on the, the Adriatic uh, Sea. It's a small, really small, uh, small town. I, I had uh, in the in the past, I also even today, uh, offer to to live in a big city like. Uh, uh, Rome, or I had for years an agent uh, in Los Angeles that keeps saying, uh, come to Los Angeles, come to Los Angeles, uh, you will work more. I, I said, I don't want to work more, I want to work better. I want to have a better life and on, uh, non yeah. a busy mind. Yeah, and then where you live, there's like a lot of 
big record shops? I mean, do a lot of people the, in Italy I, I still am, buy a lot of a lot uh, of vinyl? Yes, the the the, um, uh, the market for vinyl music is uh, is uh, it's good in Italy. Uh, of course, especially for uh, the great uh, the great name. Uh, there are a lot of uh, collectors. One of my best friends is a, a Beatles correct collector, and uh, so I have a lot of friends that that, that, that collect uh, vinyl. So we have a lot of things to uh, to say, a lot of chat about that. But I near me, I live in a really small city, uh, and uh, this record shop I was talking uh, before uh, opened uh, a month ago. So uh, during a pandemic, have, uh, to have a, a record shop uh, that, that sells only vinyl, no CDs, uh, just yeah. vinyl is a great thing. I, I have uh, nearby, uh, I think, uh, three good uh, record shop uh, that I can uh, uh, go and uh, I can uh, find uh, 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 always a uh, 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 good thing to know. The last one I bought. Uh, yeah. This one I am. I opened it a couple of days ago. It's uh, Diabolic by mm -hmm. Pivio and Alto Discazzi. Pivio is the president of uh, ACMF of uh, our association, and uh, yeah. it's a um, uh, good movie that it's uh, out uh, today in uh, in Italy. It's a yeah. good edition with a comic inside the two. Wow! I mean, it's a lim limited edition. Yeah. And it's a um, character of uh, Italian comic from the 70s. It's very well known in, uh, in Italy. And it's yeah. a, a good uh, comic movie, uh, comic book movie, but really, really, really serious. And the directors are the Manetti brothers, and uh, they are uh, really great. And the music is uh, really amazing. I suggest listening who, who is to it. Who is the composer? Who is the film score? Pivio, Pivio and Aldo Descalzi. I need to. I need are, to look. They it are up. the yeah. most uh, famous uh, composer uh, in uh, in Italy, and the Pivio is uh, the president of our association. He's yeah. a great friend of uh, mine. Uh, listen yeah. to, to this because it's really good. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I wanted to. I need to. I need to buy that one, man. Uh, yep. So um, I have only two uh, two more questions. So. Yeah. Uh, so what what is what is new coming up for you? What's your plan for? Uh, 2022, you, Hans Zimmer, for example, and Ennio Morricone, the big names are, well, Ennio Morricone is not with us anymore, but Hans Zimmer being, I think in London, he's going to be doing, he's going to be touring in the Royal Albert Hall and many venues, you know, yeah, also in Italy, showing his well, music with orchestra and so on and so forth. Do you, do you uh, people in Italy do anything like that? Would, of course, any Marconi would do it like that. Would you? Yeah. You, you have. Would you have the opportunity to do something like that? To uh, in a, on a small theater or on a venue uh, show with your music or music uh, show with the uh, film composer? There, there are not. Uh, uh, really a thing uh, in Italy. Of course, uh, Morricone uh, did a lot of uh, full uh, uh, big concert here in, at the Arena di Verona or uh, in Rome uh, or so on. Uh, and Zimmer came uh, one time, I think he will came again in uh, April. Uh, we will have the privilege to, to see uh, John Williams in uh, uh, June uh, this year in June for the first time in Italy uh, wow. in concert with the Orchestra Philharmonica in uh, Milano but it's not something you can uh, uh, listen uh, every month uh, mm. we are not a big uh, we have not a big uh, culture of fan of film music except for some uh, uh, special event uh, if uh, uh, we have in Italy, um, let's say, uh, uh, an orchestra that play <clears throat> Star Wars or uh, Lord of the Rings. Uh, of course, uh, you have uh, a sold out uh, uh, arena, but not for a uh, lot of a uh, lot of, of, of composer. We did uh, some concert with the association. Uh, 
yeah, was a uh, full uh, sold out show uh, with the best of Italian music, something like uh, that in, uh, in the past, but it's uh, not something that happens uh, every day. So we are pushing uh, this also to, uh, in this moment, of course, it's impossible. I don't know in Washington how it is uh, right now, but uh, uh, now to have a concert uh, is just uh, impossible. Uh, because uh, we don't have a full capacity of uh, uh, venues, uh, we have limited uh, uh, capacity, it's uh, usually half uh, uh, capacity, so uh, the, 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 they, they can book uh, orchestras, big orchestras or, or big name. Uh, we hope the, the situation will change, uh, will change soon, but uh, we are working with, of course, interestingly, have more. Oh, absolutely, man. And uh, where, where are we feel free to mention your name, your website, your Bandcamp, your Spotify, so the listener or the radio can can buy your music and, and that's it's, just... it's really it's really easy. But just uh, write uh, Christian with the key key R I S Christian Sensini yeah. on uh, on Google, and you'll find my website and uh, so on uh, Instagram, uh, my YouTube uh, channel. Uh, and uh, Spotify and uh, everything. Uh, and if you want to, you can go on my website and on my website, you can find uh, almost all the, all the music I, I, I wrote uh, in, uh, in streaming, even for the very small projects that are not uh, released on, the, on Spotify. So I, I like to share on my website uh, every project uh, I did because uh, they are like, like son, uh, like kids. Uh, you love uh, uh, everyone, every single of them. Absolutely, man. Well, uh, and also thank you very much for your time, Christian, man. I know it's getting late there in Italy and and uh, hopefully one day, I've never been in Italy, so I need to, one of the, one of the places I need to go because I like all the, uh, the you know, PFM and all the, Bands in the late seventies and eighties, there were a lot of progressive bands in Italy. It was amazing. Yeah. And, you, you know any name of those uh, progressive band uh, that you like in Italy? If uh, there are many, uh, I have interviewed some of them. One is I can send you the name with all the, the one that I that I have interviewed. Uh, the perhaps the famous one will be PFM. Yeah, of course. And uh, but there are there. Are, Others that they perhaps were not well known in Italy, but Italy was had many progressive bands before anybody else. Before you're, bands you're talking in, about my favorite genre of rock. Yeah, before before bands in, in the United States, before bands in um, on, uh, in the UK. There were many. I, I need to look at the name, but I will send you a list of the name and interviews I have done it. There were many, there were like 20 or 30 good ones, you know. And uh, some people are, are in the 70s or 80s or are getting very old. And they were very good music, very, very good music, you know. Of course, well, it wouldn't, Genesis wouldn't be considered perhaps progressive a little bit, but uh, in the internet, there were, there were, there were, there were many. This and and you know, you know why there was a lot of progressive band in the 70s? Uh, in Italy. No, I, would, I wouldn't know. There, no, there is a, a historical reason because yeah. uh, it's a for po political reason. Uh, in the seventies, uh, um, some uh, young uh, people from the audience started to say uh, the music is of everyone. Uh, no one must pay uh, to buy tickets to concert. So <laughs> they, uh, the people from the audience invented the free concert. This, this means uh, that when, uh, for example, uh, Genesis or Friend Zappa was uh, uh, playing at an avenue, they started to enter and uh, in a very violent uh, way. And uh, even if there was a police, uh, they started to uh, break uh, doors of the venues uh, to enter uh, to, to, to the, to free to concert of Led Zeppelin, Friends Up and Genesis. So every concert was a, a big risk for a band 
because there was a <laughs> fight and uh, and protest and so on. So in the 70s, uh, big uh, band like uh, Genesis, Led Zeppelin, and so on, started to avoid Italy. Uh, we want uh, to work uh, uh, in Italy anymore because uh, people uh, behave so badly. Uh, and so uh, lots of uh, rock band, uh, Italian rock band, started to, to rise because there wasn't an uh, uh, international uh, rock band that was interested to work uh, in Italy. So a lot of uh, progressive rock in the 70s had uh, the, the fortune to be really, really famous, really you known, because Led Zeppelin and Genesis and the other one was not more interested to play in Italy. Yeah, that's, is, right. it, that's a true, true story. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's beautiful. Like I was, uh, was looking at the radio and bands like uh, Premiata, of course, Banco del Muto, Le Orme, uh, Museo Rosenbach, and, 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 and so on and so forth. And of course, yeah. uh, you know, Goblin was, began doing uh, composite also, uh, music. The, the area, air area with Demetrio Stratos, the amazing yeah, as well. uh, yeah. singer. Yeah, it was great. It was very nice talking to you. I will send you a different email, Christian, because I'm interested in uh, getting a whole of other musicians. And definitely, I want to get that book, uh, that, that the book you mentioned, and, and the the vinyl that you showed me. And I will send you a direct link so you can post to your social media account. And I'm very grateful to Lisa because she had helped me out with with uh, a lot of people. So I'm very she, she has been very nice to me. And uh, uh, I've never been in Italy before. Hopefully, one day I want to be in Rome or somewhere and We'll get together for dinner or beer hope or wine. So, I will bring so. some Chilean wine. And uh, let me know what, uh, beside ACDC, Bag in Black, what else? What other vinyl? Because here I have. I, 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 I found it. In, in the end, I found it. Ah, uh, you uh, find uh, it, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you are looking for some stuff, I have access to a lot of it. I, I have more than I will be able to listen in a <laughs> hundred years, man. It's it's crazy. So I, if you get, if you need things in particular, let me know. I can I can send it your your way, man. No problem. Thank you, Claudio. Thank you so much. Thank you much. very much. Have a good afternoon. Thank you, appreciate it, man. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye bye. You too. Thank you.